everyone! Welcome back to In My Mug. Today's episode is 684. Few more weeks and it's Christmas. So today's episode is an um, extra special one because I am, as you can see here, I'm roasting on the camera today. And by all means, I've never actually roasted before. So <laughs> let's see how it goes. Um, so today's coffee is a coffee from uh, Doi Pan Gong, Thailand. All right, put your kettle on and let's get roasting. All right, so if you remember, um, previous episode 678, we introduced Doi Pan Gong black honey process. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description box in below. And so this coffee is a natural process micro lot of the same Akka Hill Drive uh, Thailand coffee. So coffee cherries are floated and after, um, they, after that they put them lay down on the bamboo raised bed uh, in a one inch layer. They sort out through the drying process um, so they pick the unripe cherry and fermented cherry and after they're dried, they put in a bag and cure it for two months. A lot of effort put into this coffee and I'm going to roast it, which I've never done. And I have, I feel a lot of pressure to it, but all right, let's get roasting. Okay, so this is a BMO 2020 SR Plus Roast Home Roaster. This is like quite a reasonable price, probably like one tenth of the price. And uh, this is a pretty good roaster that if you're really geeky and interested in roasting coffee. So let me talk about like how these are. So, okay, when you open the lid, um, by the way, when you're roasting, please make sure to open the window, don't wear something flammable, and make sure um, there's nice ventilation, and please do not roast unattended. So make sure while this roaster is on, make sure you're right next to it. Okay, so here you can see there's a chaff collector. So every coffee has some kind of skin in the, um, around the green beans, and that's gonna collect all the chaffs. And this is a roasting drum. Let me take this out. It's quite, you know, simple, and you can put coffee in here. Okay, I'll put it over here. And uh, let's talk about this um, monitor. <laughs> So this 100, 200, 400 is a weight of the roast coffee. So I prepared 200 grams, which um, Roland recommended. So um, when I'm roasting, I'm gonna press on the 200. A, B, C, D, I'm gonna talk about this uh, when I'm roasting, um, because it's quite easy to show you then. And plus minus is a time increment. So if you wanna roast a little bit longer, then um, you can increment the time. So this P1 to P5 is a profile, so P4 profile. Profile one is a more dense coffee, like high altitude coffee, like El Salvador, uh, Costa Rica. And then P2 is a little bit um, uh, dense, but not as high dense. Um, let's say Colombian, and I'm gonna use this Thailand coffee with the profile two as well. And the three, four, five, you can read about this on the manual. It says, um, for example, P5 is more of the robusta coffee, so it's more uh, lower altitude. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Light is like, you can turn the light on so you can see how our green coffee is roasting. Start is when you start the coffee. Cool is a cool, cooling drum. Okay, so first I'm gonna preheat pre uh, this um, coffee roaster. So I'm gonna just press. You can see it, how it changes. So if it's 100 grams, then like eight minutes, 30 seconds. And then 200 grams, it's uh, 12 minutes and then 400 grams is 18 minutes but because I just want to preheat it I'm going to press 
100 and then press start. I'm gonna now talk about this A, B, C, D button. So A um, is um, temperature, you need to hold it. Um, it says 22C, so basically this is the temperature, what um, ex exhaust temperature, so uh, what the temperature the air is coming out. B is, it currently says 25C, so it's uh, what temperature is the inside. C, um, you need this later, so C is when you start hearing the first crack, you need to press the C button, and then D is um, the change the speed of the drum, so like it gets faster cycle, and then slower. Okay, so the bemo roaster is nice and warm, it's pretty hot, so I'm gonna use gloves, I don't wanna burn my hand. Um, but so I pre-weighed 200 grams of greens and I put them in here. Okay, make it nice and even. Okay. It might be a little bit fiddly when you put this inside but um, you will get knock of it after using two times. And then put this chaff collector. And press 200. Ooh, I can't really see. And profile two. It will say 200 and P2 here, so. And then press start. And then you can turn the light on so you can see inside how it's rusting. So uh, profile two um, cycle, uh, so each cycle will be the different times, depends on the, um, how much coffee you put in. So 100 grams will be eight minutes 30, and then 200 grams will be 12 minutes. So 12 minutes, don't leave in front of this roaster. Did I say this enough? because it's going to start like um, smelling like roasting and then it start um, a little bit of smoke will come out. So don't leave in front of more when you're roasting. <laughs> so if you look into this window, you can see the coffee, green coffees are quite getting like smoother and then looks a little bit plumped. Um, so it means it's almost ready to start um, cracking. So what I'm gonna do, so I can see what's the temperature, the exhaust temperature is currently 145 degrees, and then the inside temperature is, oh, oh 114, that's interesting. <laughs> and then when you start hearing the cracking sound, it's almost like really quite popcorn popping. Um, you press the, um, C button and it will start counting down from two minutes and what I'm gonna do is instead of waiting two minutes to finish I'm gonna wait 10 seconds and press cool and that's a cooling cycle and then after pressing cool wait for 90 seconds and open the door. That's basically replicate the how uh, coffee roasters are roasting coffees in a bigger coffee roaster. Uh, it's nice and cool, it says 30 degrees, so I'm gonna stop this and let's have a look. It's still, it's, it's nice and cool, but I would recommend you to wear some kind of gloves for protection. See this, you can see, um, I think because it's a natural process, it come, the chaff comes out more and doo -doo -doo. look at that. I think I did a pretty good job. Oh, it's a, maybe a little bit lighter than it should be. Maybe I take it out a little bit earlier. But this is part of the fun, you can, you know, don't expect you to roast something perfect in the beginning. Um, you need a little bit of practice. Um, two, two, two. Okay, took it up. And please make sure to clean this afterwards, otherwise um, 
if any of the chaff still remaining, it might caught on, catch on fire when you roast next time. And okay. Okay, so coffee's ready. As you can see, yeah, I definitely took it out a little bit earlier. It looks a little bit lighter. So I, I asked Roland, can you send me some uh, green coffee of Doi Pan Con? And he sent me a roasted coffee as well. Thanks, Roland. Um, so we can uh, do a taste comparison. Um, so this is the professionally roasted coffee. And this is like Midori roast coffee. And it's probably like cooking rice, you know, you never perfect rice when you're cooking first time, you need some practice. And then, yeah, let's see. So um, this week, Chris is in town again. How amazing. So um, I'm gonna taste coffee with Chris. Come on in, Chris. Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome back. Hi, thanks for having me. What do you think? Um, which one is my ground coffee? Yeah, as you can see. Can you see? Can you tell? Yeah, I actually can tell. It's uh, <laughs> it's lightly roasted. So that's the has been roasted, right? Uh -huh. So professionally roasted, and that's me roasted. This is Midori roasted. Amazing. So, um, have you tasted this coffee before? Not this year, no. Uh, previous years I have enjoyed it, but this year I've not tried any. So maybe the first one I should try is the Midori roast. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be the best one of the year, folks. Do you know anything about this uh, coffee variety? So, a little fun story for you here. Oh, yes? A little fun story. All oh, right. So, one what? of the main varietals in this mixed lot is Tipica. Now, Tipica started being planted in Thailand quite a long time ago, um, but it's kind of lost a bit of kind of coolness and popularity recently. A lot of farmers have been ripping it out and planting stock that's uh, more high, higher yielding and it's a bit more kind of leaf frost resistant. But our sourcing partners in Thailand, Beanspire, are really, really working with their farmers to try and encourage them to keep growing Tipica because it is the like classic coffee from there. It has a really interesting profile, it's really delicious, but it does, it's a little harder to grow. However, they are saying to the farmers that there are people like myself, yourself, and all of you at home, who are very, very willing and very, very interested to try this kind of coffee. So thanks to Beanspire, we are very happy to be bringing this typical coffee to you from Thailand, which we're hoping will uh, keep growing beautifully in the country. Yay, awesome, thank you, Chris. Okay, let's get tasting then. Here's your spoon. Okay, I'm gonna bring some hot water and then get the cupping table ready. One stool. Yeah, yeah, both works. Yeah, it's more, both working. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the coffee's ready. Can you tell the difference? Um, from now you've cleaned them, no. Oh, okay, great. They look identical. Well, mm hmm. <laughs> let's see if they taste identical. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? Which one are we going to go for first? Uh, Should we go for the Midori roast or do you want to go for the other roast? Probably okay. the Gary roast. Yeah, Gary roast. Gary roast, okay. So I can like kind of sandwich this and I can finish with this in the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, so good. It tastes amazing. It's like, um, what, is it like a raisin kind of sweetness? Raisin, maybe like plum. Yeah, raisin plum yeah. Sweetness. It's really, really creamy. It's like, really creamy. Incredibly with like, creamy. Oh, it's, it's very sweet. Like, hold on. Yeah, it's very sweet, like brown, brown sugar. Yeah, definitely brown sugar, yeah. Like, almost like, imagine like a, a plummy pudding with some brown sugar crumbled on top. Oh uh, yeah, I think, yeah. I think, and then, then some double cream poured over the top. It's so juicy. Yeah. It's incredible. Do you want to taste this? Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. It's different. It is different. It doesn't really have the juiciness. It's still really creamy. It's still got a lot of creamy body to it for me. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it, in the end, it's quite dry. You don't quite get those like the kind of the, the darker, <laughs> redder, purpley, fruity flavors in them. It's uh, definitely under roasted. I'm sure some people would love this. Okay, great. You know what? I had such a great fun roasting. And I was like, well, I, I was roasting, maybe I was like, you know what? I'm gonna package this and then give it to my family as a Christmas present because I haven't even thought about, you know, what kind of present I'm gonna give, give them. And then, you know, there you go. This is 
such a great fun. Um, yeah, um, which one did you like? I'm gonna Do you have to go with the, the probably the professional <laughs> roast. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's I'm sorry. Okay. Well, like a roasting coffee. I mean, coffee is like a you know for me it's like a sushi. You know, if you're eating at like professional restaurant and if you're like you know um, roasting at home, like in a at home sushi, it tastes completely different. But luckily, the product itself is really good. So even if it's a little bit under roast, it still tastes quite okay. It's a really interesting thing like with coffee, especially like with our stuff, it comes to us green and then we roast it. And then if you're roasting it at home, you get to really kind of taste the difference of what our kit can do, what your kit can do. And then you've got to brew it as well. So we've brewed these identically. Um, and even then you can get different flavors and different things out of how it's brewed. So it's such a changeable product. It's not like a bottle of wine, you kind of get given, oh right, cool, pour it in a glass, done. It's such an interesting, changeable, interesting, delicious product. Yeah, definitely. And this is a whole new angle to think about. Yeah, so if you didn't know, um, so in my mug, we give uh, we have a choice of our green raw coffee as well. So um, if you scroll down to the bottom, it says raw green coffee as an option. So if you want to try roasting at home, there you go. So what did you think about uh, this week's um, in my mug? How do you roast at home? If you do, what kind of roast machine, uh, roaster you use? And if you don't, um, if you want to know more about the roasting or professional roaster, please let us know in the comment in below. And we'd like to know what you think about um, home roasting and then professional roasting. Thank you very much guys for watching this week's In My Mug and hopefully see you soon next week. Happy brewing.